people think that it's only the smaller ticket offices. They don't realise like the likes of Birmingham New Street and Manchester Piccadilly are going to close. Big stations in the northwest now. They're saying that we're only going to have two station hubs: Blackburn and Blackpool. So every other station, including Preston, all the smaller stations between Preston and Manchester, are all facing closure. Just with the Vanti West Coast alone, they've said that they will close every ticket office. For many of us, we can't use the ticket machines. We need ticket offices. They provide support with access journeys, getting us onto the station, checking our security. In these ticket offices, there's a lot of people who've been there for a lot of years, and that, that, you can't replace that wealth of experience with a ticket machine. You know, a ticket machine's not going to offer you the best deal of the day. It's going to sell you the most expensive ticket, which is what these ticket machines are set up to do. It's vital to people to get that information in regards to tickets, destinations and stuff like that, and help with getting on trains and getting off trains and stuff like that. You know? Seven years ago, I had an accident. I didn't have the proper assistance, and I got onto a train, I slipped, my bum hit the platform, and my legs went under a stationary train. The most important thing is to put a, a ramp down and to assist me onto that train safely, guide me to my seat, tell them the next train station that I'm coming, like we went on holiday at the start of July, and we went for each station knowing we were coming and go to end destination, I will not be able to travel. What this government wants to do is take away our right to turn up and go. They expect us to book an accessible journey two hours in advance. That's direct discrimination, and that breaks the United Nations Convention of the Rights of Disabled People, Article 19, the right to independent living and the right to live independently in the community. The ticket offices are more than just about selling tickets. They're a safe place to go when you're not feeling too confident in a concourse on a station. They enable passengers to get where they need to be in comfort and at the best price. They take cash, which is a bonus these days. Thornaby is one of the ticket offices that is going to be closed, keeping staff on on much reduced hours. It's a busy station. We still get a lot of people who buy tickets at Thornaby and a lot of people who buy cash as well. 40% of tickets still done by cash at Thornaby. The drive to online purchases only or to a smartphone app with no access to pay cash at machines excludes a huge number of older and disabled people and others in society who don't have access to devices or broadband. And in this cost of living crisis, over a million people have stopped their broadband contract because they cannot afford it. There's people coming to us when we're still on picket lines and saying that they don't know how to use these apps or they don't know how to use those machines. And how are they going to travel by train in the future if this happens? On the 29th of August, Great Western Railway ticket machines went down right across the country. So where would you get a ticket to travel without getting a fine? You'd have to go to a ticket office. Our fight, your fight! 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 The consultation has been a complete fudge for disabled people. 23% of disabled people in the UK have got no access to a computer and can't afford the internet. Their voices have been denied. Millions more of disabled people have not been able to access the consultation because the train operating companies haven't provided Braille, audio, British Sign Language, Easy Read, large print and paper copies. Consultation should be a minimum of 12 weeks. It isn't. That breaks equalities law. Shame on you, Senate, for that. The choice and the decision to shut the ticket offices, to de-staff our stations, to make a quarter of our members working on the stations redundant in the notices they've already given to us is a political decision by Rishi Sunak. It's a political decision by Jeremy Hunt. It wasn't that long ago, we as an industry, before the pandemic, we were talking about the 180% increase in sexual assaults in our railway. We were talking about county lines. We were talking about acid attacks. So we need that visible presence on the platforms, in the ticket offices, and also on the trains. Our members three and a half years ago were held as heroes. They were the people that kept the railways moving through the COVID pandemic. A lot of our members put their lives on the line, and my member, Belly Majinga, lost her life when she was assaulted at work 
and contracted COVID. I want to get all of our reps together. I'd actually like to get all of our members together and let's have a discussion about what steps that they want to take next. And obviously what they say is what will happen. If they're ready to take industrial action, that's what we'll do. I don't believe it's our job to fund the privateers, hundreds of millions of pounds in profit, right, to pay their dividends, their shareholders, while cutting the jobs and the conditions and the wages of rail workers in the UK. We're all fighting the same fight. We've, we've, we're all struggling against cuts, pay rises that haven't been delivered, jobs that are on the line and all of our members working terms and conditions. What they're telling us to do in this industrial dispute is give up everything you've negotiated, everything that our forebears handed on to us in terms of terms and conditions, pensions, pay, rostering, whatever you want to name, which is really important on a 24-7 railway. You've got to give that up for a poxy 9% over four years. And we're saying, we're not having it. We're going to keep this fight up and we'll keep going until we get an agreement that we can support.